This is Chrissy Idaho Painter here on Paint Life TV. I'm here all the way in Minnesota at the United Hardware Show, United I believe. Hardware. Is that where I'm at? Minneapolis, Minnesota, big game today with the Vikings, yes. Yeah, we're here. I'm, I'm having a hard time figuring out where I'm at because I feel like I just got out of the shower for some reason. Yeah, but yeah. Um, I've got Dustin here with me. Um, uh, you own something something with a back <laughs> I'm having trouble thinking too I don't I don't know what it is something's yes. going on up up here in this area brush baggy brush beanie something like brush beanie. That. yeah brush beanie that rings a bell <laughs> yep <laughs> <laughs> This is Chris, the Idaho Painter here on Paint Life TV. I'm all the way over in Minnesota. We're here at the show. I found Dustin at the Paint Life booth, brought him over here. And um, Dustin, I want you to give me a little bit a little bit of story about yourself. You are the creator of the Brush Baggy, right? Brush Baggy, yes, that's so, correct. So um, give me just a little bit of history about who you are, whether you're a professional painter, and how you know, the Brush Baggy even came about. Yeah, yeah, so my background is in art. I have uh, undergrad in fine art, a master's in fine art. Then I went on to do uh, online e-commerce stuff for a number of years. And um, I'm not a painter, but I'm a pretty hardcore DIYer. You know, I do stuff, projects around yep. the house. So, you know, I've always painted uh, and I've always used plastic to keep brushes from drying out. Plastic's a great material for that. So what kind of plastic were you using before you created Anything the that was handy around the house. You know, like most of us, we just mm -hmm. try to use what's what's around Poop us. Poop bags, grocery bags, grocery bags, shopping bags. Yes, garbage bags, garbage you know, the tray bags. and yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, you know, that stuff worked in a pinch, but as I was using these, I'm like, you know, somebody should create a bag specifically for brushes and paint tools. Right. So there's a specific purpose to the, the bags that you're using. They're sized, the right shapes and sizes for the tools. The, the thickness of the plastic is good enough so it's gonna keep your, your paint wet for mm -hmm. a long period of time. So those kind of things. So it looks like, to me, because uh, I started using the brush baggies and I like them, and I'll talk a little bit about why I like them here later on, but it just looks like a Ziploc bag to me. And a lot of people are gonna say, why not just use a sandwich Ziploc bag? It is, it is a Ziploc. I've never you know, said it was nothing different than that, but there are differences. So one is, um, you know, for the brushes themselves, there's a hole in the base of this, and that hole's designed to stretch and seal around the handle. So the hole is kind of unique. It is unique, yep. yeah, because if it's not the right shape, you'll just push the handle right through, it'll, it'll yep. tear open. Because I notice when I put the brushes through, it always stays tight around the handle. Yeah. So there's something about the hole yeah. where it doesn't allow air to leak through. And it so... doesn't. It's small, but it's stretchable. Right. And also the paint on the filaments will grab the plastic and hold it tight yep. against the uh, base of it. So Dustin, I want to just talk a little bit about um, environmental resources, because I know this is one of those topics that, you know, it's kind of a touchy subject because we are using plastic. We are adding more plastic to uh, our landfills. Yes, after we take this off, it goes into the trash. But I know a lot of people now, it's very common for painters to take, say, a roller, a four inch roller or a nine inch roller, use it once, and then throw it away because it's not worth even cleaning. So your wow. brush baggies, you can stick it in there. And what's the impact you know, of resource and how are we saving and utilizing rest, less resources by using a brush baggie? Yeah, so there's a couple things there actually. Number one is the size of the bag specific to the tool. So you're only using the minimum amount of plastic needed to cover the tool. So that's, that's the first point. The second point is if you're literally uh, treating your brushes as disposable objects, there's an amazing amount of resources that go into creating a paintbrush. The wood itself alone, the, the uh, refining and the, the trees and, and all the stuff that, all the steps that go into making that. So as long as you can keep that around as long as possible, the, the, the resources required to make a, a plastic bag are insignificant compared yeah. to what it takes to make a brush. Yeah, we have a, um, I have a roller. So I got a roller, a actual a corner roller right here. So corner roller, this right here, if I was to just take and utilize, fill this up with paint, utilize it one time and then throw it away and not clean it out because hey, next tomorrow I might be using the same color. If I don't clean it out and I throw it away, there is a significant more amount of plastic that's inside this core and resources to make these fibers yeah. than there is in a brush baggie, right? Absolutely, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. So to me, it, there is a huge benefit to just throwing this thing in the baggie, zip locking it up, and then clean it later. But mm -hmm. once again, you have to understand your own environment, environmental regulations. Where can you clean this thing? And you know what water resources are using? Can you clean it in the gravel and the dirt or the grass? Is it going to kill grass? There's a lot of things you need to study and yeah. learn before you do That's so. True, yeah. But I think the brush bag is a great option to stick this thing in there, clean it now, clean it later, whatever you need to do. The very first day I used the brush bag is I used it, set it down, and I realized how professional looking it looks. Right. And I'm very big into looking professional and acting professional yeah. at the job site. No messy work site, right? Yeah, no messy work sites. Yeah. And if a customer walks by and sees your brush in a brush baggie, it just looks more professional than mm. it just wrapped up into a wad of plastic or say wrapped into a doggy poop bag. Less messy too. Less messy. Yeah, unwrapping it. But I know like I've um, heard you talk about possibly making these out of some type of biodegradable plastic. Yes. Yeah. So we're working with a company right now in Detroit. Um, it's a local company where I'm at. I live in Detroit and they have a new plastic film that they're working on. It's in the fi final stages of development that's actually compostable. So the difference between compostable and recyclable is compostable stuff you don't recycle. Right. You put it back, you throw it away, you put it back into Mother Earth and it's designed once it hits um, uh, dirt and microbes that it will break down within 90 days, could be completely gone. Wow, so, that's amazing. Yeah. So I want to just talk a little bit about, you know, I started using them. I really liked it because it looked professional, but there's also everybody in every different state has their own environmental regulations sure. and even outside the country everybody has their own environmental regulations and one thing is is you can't take a paintbrush and just clean it out in a customer's yard so you have to take and transport that paintbrush somewhere right. else putting it into the baggie it's simple you can slide it into a baggie take it and clean it somewhere else mm -hmm. I, I can take it to back to my shop clean it in the sink if that you know is okay with the environmental regulations but the other thing is is I'm, if I'm coming back tomorrow and going to be painting the exact same color, if I put it in the baggie, I come back tomorrow and it's still wet, I'm not having to clean that brush. In, in a lot of places, say California, there is like what we call a drought. There's not a lot of water oh, yeah. available. So sure. um, there's multiple things that, you know, the brush baggie helps you save in other resources. Um, versus, you know, the baggie itself, utilizing the resources in the baggie. Mm -hmm. But you also have, um, you got brush baggies, but you have other a couple stuff. other products. Other that, stuff, yeah. Um, and so you started off with the brush baggie, but what else do you have? So, um, yeah, we started out with this one, you know, it's for a two and a half inch brush or anything from a one to three inch, but we went on to rollers, we went on to trays. So you, know, you size you a, specifically for those those tools. So you have a baggie for rollers. Rollers, um, several and, different rollers, yeah. So for like, I think you got nine inch, 18 inch. Yeah. Um, you can store four inch rollers. Yep. Um, you got them for trays. Trays, And yep. then you came up, this is, I think of all the brush baggie products, this really is my favorite. Oh, cool. And what is this product? This is, we're calling the brush beanie. So um, what this is, is a plastic shower cap, really. It's, um, you know, it's bigger than a typical shower cap. It's thicker than a typical shower cap. But again, it's designed to go over buckets and trays, any really, any container um, that you use on the job site. And it, it allows you to seal that container, but still have a little room up top for yeah. your brushes if they're sticking up out of the can. Yeah. So, so this is um, getting back to the professionalism and looking professional. What we would typically do with our cut-in buckets, we'd have a two-gallon bucket, mm -hmm. and if we were going to lunch, we'd take a wet rag, stick a wet rag over the top of the bucket, and it keeps it humid, and it keeps it wet, and yeah. and it, it works. But what happens if it's 100 degrees outside, that dries. If you don't use it for several hours, eventually the paint skims over, mm -hmm. and then the rag sometimes falls into the paint. When you came out with this product, I was like, this is absolutely brilliant because now I don't have to search for rag, go wet the rag, stick it over there, worry about it drying out. Right. And then when I'm done, all I got to do is take it off my bucket. I stick it in my back pocket. Yeah, you can and reuse it. Reuse and it. And mm -hmm. so we would reuse them over and over. The brush baggies, you know, I think, um, do you sell them in individuals or do you sell them in packs? How do you? Uh, they come in different quantities. So you can buy, that's like a, uh, we call a small project pack. 
you know, one day type thing. Then there's a 50 pack and then like a 200 pack for contractors that yeah. are gonna be using it every day. Yeah, so what I started doing, um, cause if I go to lunch, I'm gonna just take and stick my brush in a brush baggie or if I'm gonna store it overnight, I just typically have two or three of these in my pocket. So I just have them in my yeah. pocket. So whenever I need one, just pull it out and it's there. I don't have to go search the job site for plastic to wrap it in. Don't need to go find a roll of tape, it's there. Perfect. If at the end of the day, I have them left over. I just send them on my nightstand. When I wake up, I stick them back in my pocket when I go to work. So yeah. what's the average cost of these things? Uh, well, really it's it's uh, inexpensive. A couple of cents per bag, really, when uh, you break it down. If you're buying the contractor size, I think maybe uh, five cents a bag. Because I think, because some people were thinking, um, I was getting comments back, how much people are thinking, like they're a dollar a bag or so. Oh, no. So, <laughs> so they're pennies a bag. Pennies a bag, yeah. Pennies a bag. So they're yeah. relatively, very inexpensive. Yeah. So it's a great product, Dustin. I think you've come up with something amazing. It's it's created this ability for us painters to look well, professional. Well, yeah, and actually it was, uh, uh, the idea came from a painter who many of you might know, uh, Robbie from Splash came up with this idea. So props he, to Robbie. The um, brush beanie idea? Yeah, brush beanie the, idea. The brush yeah. beanie, so the yeah. brush beanie disappeared. So um, Splash Painting came up with this idea right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. So there you go, brush beanie. Absolutely right. amazing. Thanks for um, coming, hanging out with us. Yeah, little, man. Um, it's great to be with you. I'm a yeah, big it's, fan, and it's 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 this was fun. So here is a brush bag. I want to show you the brush bag. Here's a brush, and just a simple little trick to utilizing a brush bag. Because I know when I first got it, the very first time I put a brush in there. Um, it was weird. I thought, this, <laughs> oh my God, this is so difficult doing this. But somebody shared a trick to me right off the bat of how to do it. And so and it made it so much easier. One thing is when you open up the brush baggie, get some air into it, kind of fluff it up. And then you just kind of squeeze, pinch squeeze it, it yeah. right here. And you squeeze, pinch it because you're going to have a lot of paint up here and you don't want to get that all over the place. Now I'm just going to push it up my ferrule mm. or up my handle right here. Now I'm just going to take and just get it up here, work it over the top, and then it zips right in. Just a simple little method of how to get your brush bristles dirty with paint or wet with paint into a brush I think baggie. I can do better than that. Can I try? I think we should have like a online competition, like how quick somebody can be. That would actually be a good competition. Yeah. We can give out some free paint life gear. Yeah. Who can who can get it in there without getting any paint on the That would be a good one. Zipper. It takes a little finesse, you're right. So you do so you, you have you a different ready? you have a different Yeah, when trick? I'm watching you it looks a little painful actually. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. So the uh, master. You, you got one part right you pinch it to open pinch up it. yeah but you put it in you actually pop it through the bottom so that kind of holds it for a second and oh. you do that and then that's it well that so, slip zip and then when you're ready to go again of course you you rip oh we, we yeah so and that so, bottom edge is designed to tear away if you guys um want these products where can people find brush funny baggies? funny you should ask it's on paint life pro this is a, a new new site started a couple of months ago and uh, it's a great one-shop uh, stop for many unique products that you're not gonna find everywhere. Yeah, so if you're interested in the brush baggies or, or I think on Paint Life Pro, there's a bunch of other painting products, painting tools. Absolutely. I mean, there's even some Paint Life gear available Absolutely. there. Yeah, yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed the interview with Dustin Martin, the creator of Brush Baggy. If you wanna see more interviews or see more tips, tricks, on Paint Life TV, come check us out. Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell on either side. I don't know what side it's on, but if you don't hit the notification bell, the subscribing doesn't even do anything because you won't get notified mm. when Dustin comes out with another interview or when he shows us another cool product. New products, yeah. See you on our next video, out.